Shalom, everybody. Welcome to Mishpacha. I'm Debbie Good with some members of my family. I'm here with Rebecca, my husband Joe, Myron, and David, and we're celebrating the Sabbath. Uh, last time we were together, we talked about some of the blessings, and we demonstrated some of these blessings for you. What we're going to do now is to pick up where we dropped off, and we are in the middle of a Sabbath Seder service. After um, having blessed the children, and after having gone through the the, uh, res yield. the recitation of the Proverbs pas passage dealing with the woman of valor, her husband does to, to his uh, towards his wife. That's right. So what we do is we pick up with uh, what we refer to as kiddush. This is a sanctification where we take the glass of wine and we're going to sing. This really will have a, a, a lot of uh, significance on setting the day apart. Okay, now your wine, tell them about the wine, what it needs to be for Kiddush. First of all, it must be a red or grape wine. Okay. Uh, because it's actually, the wine is going to resemble uh, the blood in some respects, but also we want it to be a red grape wine because it must be sweet. Now this is a Kiddush cup. Let me see if I can turn it. Here we go. You said this one has a special decoration, but it's not required that you use this special cup, you can, any cup, but it needs to hold four ounces. So are we ready? Are we ready? And let's see what, let me get the bottle out of the way. Okay, the first thing that we do is our table will have the bread up on it. The bread is called challah. We don't have any challah with us today because we're doing a show on the Sabbath rather than one on, that is taking place on the Sabbath. We're not doing the show on the Sabbath. The show is about, about the, the Sabbath. Sabbath. Okay, yes. let's make that distinction. Yeah, right. And, but your bread, your challah, is to be covered. And uh, Debbie had shown a few weeks back how to make these challah covers. Uh, you can improvise. This is one that she had made. And if you use a knife, it's not required, the knife needs to be uh, also hidden. Because on the Sabbath, it's a picture of the millennium. It's the time when Messiah has come. And it, it says that the weapons will be made into agricultural implements. There's no more weapons. There's no more war. So we don't want anything that will resemble a weapon. Now, the uh, the challah is covered, and I will hold the cup up. In our family, everybody has a cup that is poured. A lot of times the father will take his cup, and after the blessings, he will pour a little bit from his cup into, into some smaller... Each person's. That's right. That's right. And you start off with the passage that is from uh, Genesis and chapter 2. And... Uh, I'm going to read this in Hebrew and then in English. Uh, and our friend Gila over in Israel, she sings this beautifully. We haven't learned the tune to it. Used to, we didn't read it in Hebrew, we only read it in English, which I'll do right now. And it was evening and it was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their host. And on the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the, uh, the seventh day and sanctified it because he rested from all his work on it, which God had created and made. I'm going to ask that we depart a little bit from most family customs and even from our own custom. Generally, whenever we do Kiddush, it is the father who will lead the rest of the family in Kiddush. We're going to alter the Hebrew just a little bit so that we don't take the, the words that refer to the name of God in vain in any way, and we, you'll see how they are altered. But I'm going to ask, because I never get to do this at home, we always do this where you do the blessing, I'm going to ask if I can do the blessing and if you will lead the children in joining me whenever we would join you in Kiddush. Okay, would that's that be great. acceptable? And I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and hold a cup. Okay, because so you're here this, with me. But like, again, make no mistake, generally it is the Father who does this. We're just uh, uh, doing this for, for musical purposes right now. And if you do the Savri Marnan? Savri Marnan ve Rabatai. Which means, uh, uh, by permission of all present. Bavuk atad Hashem, elokeinu melech Amen. 
Bavul katar shem melakenu melakalam asher kishan be misvatav ratavanu ve shabat katsha be ahava uvratzon hichilanu zikaron le maase bereshit ki hu yom tehila le mikre kodesh zekelitiat mitraim. Kivanu vehata vertanu kidashta mikohanim veshabat kasheha veahva uvratzon ikatanu Baruchu katadu shem mikadesh Amen. And then everyone would drink the wine. Once you've drunk the wine, then you're going to go uh, either to a, a, a special place that is appointed uh, where a pitcher is set up, or in our case, we go to our kitchen sink. And at the kitchen sink, we have a special uh, well, uh a special pitcher. 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 That yeah, would be the word. <laughs> pitcher. It's, it's uh, going to be around about uh, about this size. It's not uh, tremendously large. It stands about this high, but it has two handles on it. That uh, way well, you can hand it from one hand to the other without uh, turning the pitcher around. Now, to represent this, I'm going to use just a coffee cup. But what we do is we wash our hands. Now, there's a very important reason. It has nothing whatsoever to do with where Yeshua said about the washing of the hands and feeling like the, the people had received, uh, that they were righteous with God because of fulfilling an act. It, it's not that at all. What we're doing here is our table, our Sabbath table, has become an altar. And the bread that we have on our plate is like the bread offerings that were offered in the temple. And we have become priests and priestesses at our table. You remember that God had told Israel back at Mount Sinai that you will be a kingdom of priests, a royal priesthood, as it says in the New Testament. And so the priests, before they could come up to the altar, they were required to wash their hands and feet. And so we do that at this time. Now, it's very important that as you hold that wine up and you sing the Kiddush and you drink the wine, that you say, okay, I'm going to set myself apart to God right now. I'm not going to think about my job. I'm not going to think about something that I want to go and do. I'm going to just have time with the Lord. And then when you go to wash the hands, you think of coming to the altar of God. Now that's communion. That's where you have communion is where you come and you're going to meet with the Lord. So you take the cup in your hand. First, you take it in the right hand. And then you are going to fill it with water and pass it to the left hand. Why is that important? Because it was the way that it was done in the temple and you are remembering you are a priest. Also, it's important to remember that it is the right arm also that is symbolic of the Messiah. And so although the Messiah will take, you know, generally start the action, the left hand will serve the, the right. right hand first. And you also so take your point, jewelry off. Remove all rings. All rings. Uh, and so forth. And, and your you, hands are already supposed to be clean. By oh, the way. yeah. You're not washing your hands to get the germs off. This is a ceremony of the priest. And so you take it in your left hand, pour it over your hand and like this, and then you turn it over. And then you're going to switch hands. This is where the two handles come in handy. And then you turn it over. Then you turn it back over. And you do this three times on each hand. Then you set it down. We always fill it up for the next person coming. And we have a special towel. Now this towel, is, I say it's special because in our house it's decorated. It has the blessing in Hebrew that you say for the washing of hands. But you can use any towel. There's no requirement. In the hotels we often use paper towels. Yes, but before you wipe your hands, before you actually dry your hands, you lift up the hands that are clean. Remember the scripture that says, I lift up clean Lifting up uh, holy, holy hands. hands. That's right. That's where we get That's that. That's where it comes from because That's the right. priests, after they washed their hands in the temple, would hold their hands up showing 
that they were clean before the Lord. And if you Lord. will hold your hands up, I will read the blessing. Baruch atah Hashem, lakeinu melech ha'olam, asher kedushonu b'misvatah v'tzivanu, al natilat yadayim. Amen. And you know, I had a friend who once told me the way that she remembered that, the, the end of that, it's just like, it starts out like all the other blessings, but the way she would remember it, al natilat and then Yadayim. Yadayim means hands. Yad is one hand. Yadayim would be two hands. And then the al natilat, she was thinking, not a lot. You know, because you take a little bit of water and, you know, not too much, but not a lot. And so she's thinking, al natilat Yadayim. And that's how she learned it by word association. And what this so. means is, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by his commandments and commanded us to wash our hands. One of the things that Debbie did that's really neat is that she took the blessing and we have uh, in computer programs where we can type in Hebrew and she typed the blessing out in Hebrew and then below it she wrote it in English but it was the Hebrew words in well, other words it said Baruch spelled out B-A-R-U-C-H. Actually, actually what I did we, we had visited with a close friend in California and I noticed that she had a laminated copy of the hand washing blessing and, and then some of the blessings after the meal also and she had taken this laminated version and stuck it in you know the piece of wood with a little slot like a little stand and had it right by the sink and I thought well how nice because we're always having company over we're always having to walk them through the blessing and it becomes more and more difficult not to mention that some of the children, for example, Myra, is still pretty young, and, and although he knows the blessing, there have been times when, you know, he might have difficulty remembering something. I thought, if we could just have it up there, right above our kitchen sink, it would make it so much easier, not only for the children, in case they forget, because I know I forget things, you know, I, I tend to, to lose things I haven't done for a long time, but, but also, it would help any of our guests coming over for dinner, that they would have the... Um, the blessing right there for them. And what we wrote out was a transliteration, which would be the our, our common alphabet, but the Hebrew pronunciation of the blessing, and then under it, the translation of it. You put the little cord inside one of those things that you get at the floor shop when you go mm -hmm. in and, you know, you buy some flowers and they give you a little thing to stick down in the flowers and you stick the, the cord saying, the cord holder. thank you. Yeah, the mm -hmm. cord holder. Mm -hmm. And so it's right there, uh, real convenient for everyone. Now, once you have said the blessing, you hold your hands up, then you wipe them off, you put your jewelry back on, and then... And you're not supposed to talk. That's right. No you talking. You can't speak. No talking. You cannot talk This is the part until... that, that Joe and I truly enjoy in our home. And as a matter of fact, there are times when we feel like we can hold a threat over the kids' heads, you know, they're, you know, that we could take a little bit longer. There was one time I think we were playing with them, just joking with them, where we were just moving very slowly. Because after you, you wash your hands, after saying the blessing, you're really not supposed to say anything else. The Father may say the blessing for the bread, and we may say amen, but you're not supposed to say anything else until after the bread is eaten. So, and so uh, we all come back to the table one at a time. And when everybody is there, Debbie is always in our family. She's the last one because this is right before we eat our meal. And, and actually, as everybody else is washing their hands, this is when I'm taking the dinner out of the oven or putting it in the bowl or getting it ready to go onto the table. So we try to utilize our time. That's how we have done things in the past. Generally, I go first so that I can wash my hands and then I'll come and help her in doing this. And she goes last. And so as she's washing her hands, I've moved over to the table. And I have to have salt. It's very important that I have salt because this deals with the covenant of God. And we're going to use the salt at this time. I take the matzah cover off, or the challah cover, and I'll fold it up, and then Debbie places it away. Now, we yeah, use she fold pita. it up, and then I refold it. Right. <laughs> because we, usually I don't like the way you fold things. Usually we have the, the challah, and of course what we have here today is just some pita to illustrate but there's a process that you go through. And the first thing you do is you salt it. Because God made a salt covenant with the people and salt speaks of redemption and it speaks of uh, life after death. It's a preservative. Uh, it uh, also was used in the temple. They salted all the sacrifices. Then you take the loaves and you put them kind of together and you draw a knife across one and then across the other. You place the knife back down where it's moved away. You pick the loaves up, one hand underneath and one hand above, and you sing the blessing. Baruch atah Hashem, 
Elokeinu melech ha'olam, ha'motzi lecha min ha'aretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. Now, many people take and they break the bread or you cut the bread. In our family, we cut, but it doesn't matter. It's up to you how you do it. But there is one rule, and that rule is that I can't hand the bread to you. You have to come and get the bread and, in other words, uh, it takes an affirmative action on each person's part to receive right. from the bread of the earth. Now, in the case of Yael, uh, we have a, a, a little, as we have Kiddush, and you know, we have the wine and the grape juice, we have a little two-ounce bottle of grape juice that we have prepared for her every week. And she expects it. And she gets one of the slices of bread I take and hand hers to her. After we've cut the bread or broken the bread, we put a little more salt on it. Then we eat, and now we're free to talk, and the table, the the food comes to the table. As a matter of fact, usually right before we wash our hands, we will collect the Sabbath Seder books and put them aside. But we're going to just remove a few things right now. And I wanted to mention some of the things about the music or the tunes we've been doing. I think I've mentioned before, I know that when Joe's been out here, he's talked about how we have a resource list, or Hatikva Ministries has a resource list. If you write to our office, we'll be glad to send this to you. And I'll just give you an indication of some of the things that are on it. Uh, for example, scriptures, different types of Bibles you can buy, uh, extra biblical documents. And of course, we've got the names of publishers and everything, commentaries, lexicons, dictionaries, let's say books on culture, daily life, books on festivals. The list is quite extensive. It's very, very long. But toward the end, and you might want to get a pen or paper at this point, we have some... Um, Little extras on our resource list, uh, in addition to periodicals and softwares, we also have uh, some ideas on where you can get some music. One of them is Tara, that's T-A-R-A, -A, Publications, which is for Jewish music and songbooks. And I'm going to give you their website number. Uh, it's www.tara, that's T-A-R-A, dot com. And I'll give you an idea of some of the things you might be able to purchase for them. For example, this book, let's see if I can read the title, Hebrew Songs for All Seasons. That's a good one. This is very, very good. Uh, it's, it's, we've used it quite a bit. And let me give you just an idea of what people might be able to find in a book of this sort. Um, it's got Kiddush, I believe. Yes, on page 48. And let me explain how this is done. This is just wonderful. If the cameras can get a little bit close here. This is the Kiddush, or the sanctification of the wine that we just did. It will have the notation, uh, like we would read off of the musical staff. And then underneath it, it, underneath it, it will have the transliteration, or the pronunciation of the words. Underneath that, in box form, they will have the Hebrew letters. And then they will have the English translation. This is incredible. So, uh, for example, I have, under a couple of notes here, I have Baruch. And then in a box under that, the English transla translation, which is blessed. And then underneath that, the actual Hebrew word. This is one of the best ways to uh, so learn a little bit more. So you can actually learn some of the Hebrew right. words as you sing the songs. But even going into that, sometimes you can get the Hebrew. And you can work on getting a translation, but it's the tunes that people are needing. You know, so you have the musical tone uh, in the notation right here. And it's got several other little songs that might be done either for the Sabbath or uh, folk songs or uh, oh, here's one that we need to learn. It's called Shavuot Tov. We talked about this in the past, but Shavuot Tov means a good week. That would be one week. that you would do at the end of the Havdalah. That's right. The ceremony that concludes the Sabbath. But this, because it's got what they refer to as an integrated translation, this is one of the best books I have seen. And you might want to just look over the table of contents and see if there's any other songs you want to bring out. Well, I mentioned a couple of other books. This one is the best of Israeli folk dances. And again, this is a book that can be purchased through Terra Publications. And I might add that on the back cover, you can see that this was many, many years ago. This is what they offered. And they've increased it, oh, a hundredfold since then. So you might be able to get a listing of some of the songs that are in each book. The problem is that every song you want will not be in one book. And you might have to purchase two or three. So you need to be choosy and get a list of the table of contents. But these will actually have dance instruction. Uh, let me turn to one in particular I know is in here. One of the most famous ones. Actually, we're going to, 
end up singing this on one of the programs we do, and the name of the song is Ushafta Mayim, or sometimes just listed as Mayim, which means, Joe? It is water, water. It's listed as Mayim in this particular book. Let's see, on page 14. Okay, I'm going to let the cameras get in a little bit closer right here so you can see this. They will have the musical notation with the guitar symbols for the chords or the harmony that can be used. Underneath that, they will have the transliteration or the Hebrew pronunciation uh, written out. And then down at the bottom or sometimes on another page, they will give you a translation of it. And then over on the other side, they will actually give you the instructions on how to dance to this particular song. This is uh, one book that we've really enjoyed using from time to time. So, and in fact, uh, at one time you learned uh, just using one of these books. Yes, we uh, you learned. Zadik Kadamar was one we learned out of this right. book, and Shibalet Basadi. Basadi. And yes. there are several others w that we've used with this particular book. But so, if there are any uh, groups of larger families, or maybe small congregations, or, or Bible study groups out there, this would be a valuable book for their library. Okay. Okay. And then the other one I have here, by the way, we do have many more books. As a matter of fact, one that I use quite often has a pianistic styling for a lot of the songs in the book. It's just that the book is falling apart. I've used it so much that it's really in a shambles. So I won't bring that one up, but I'm, I'll get the name for it for people. It's um, it's this one right here. Can you read the name? A Harvest oh, the of, Harvest Ju of Jewish, Jewish Songs. Songs. And like yes. I said, this one has music and pianistic si uh, styling, such as Hatikva, Shalom Aleichem. Adon Alam. Adon Alam. I don't know if that one is in there, but you can find Adon Alam in a lot of books. But here's another one. I, I don't recommend this so much for family use. This is a Sidur in song. The prayer book. This is the prayer book, right. So it's not going to have a lot of the table songs, but I'll tell you what it will have. For example, most of these books will probably have a version of Osei Shalom. Yes, it does. On page 42, it will have one of the most popular arrangements of we say oh, Osei Shalom in our last, in our uh, last, last program. And by the way, it's right next to one of the versions that which, which we talked about. That's right, in Longing for the Temple. And that's one that we haven't learned, and so now we're going to be committed in learning something new. But anyway, that would just, I hope, be a little bit of help to people who are wanting to know how to incorporate some of the melodies or how to learn these things. If we can't give you the information, then we hope at least we can send you to the people who can. Okay, we have two requests for songs. One is Havana Shalom Alakum, which peace we give unto you. And David has requested Adon Alam. Well, let's start with uh, Havana Shalom Alakum. Havana Shalom Alakum. Havana Shalom Alakum. Havana Shalom Alakum. Havana Shalom 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 Alakum. Thank you, Shalom Alakum. Aveni shalom alechem. Aveni shalom alechem. Aveni shalom 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 alechem. Hey, and then Adon Alam. This is a song. Okay, wait just a second, honey. I want to make sure that uh, we didn't hurt anybody's ears with that last time. <laughs> <And then, laughs> they're all recuperating back there in the uh, director's room. Okay, let's go on. Then we want to do Adon Alam. This is a very serious song. It's become a family favorite of ours. The words are on one page, uh, 122, in our page 122 book. in ours, but you can find this particular melody in several music books. And there are a lot of different tunes to do this too, but it's, it's a song, it's so beautiful, it means Lord of the universe, and it just praises God how great He is. You ready? <laughs> Beterim ko yitzini bra, le'en nasav ve'ezoko. Azay malek, azay malek shemo nikra. Ve'akare kiko tako, le'vado yimlak no ra. Ve'hu haya. Behu 
Well, Joe, we've just about run out of time, but we have, except for eating the meal, we have done a lot of the things we do uh, on our Sabbath evenings, at Friday night evenings at home. But there is one other thing that we do, and we take a little bit more time with this. It's something we really cannot do on the air, but we do a special group of prayers following the meal called the Grace After the Meal. And as right. we're ending up today, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Grace After the Meal? The Grace meal. After the Meal dates back to before the days of Yeshua. It's very ancient. It's divided into four parts. And it's uh, according to the Bible, Deuteronomy 8.10, that you are after you're full, you've eaten your meal and you're full, then you are to thank the Lord for the food that he has given you. And it's really a unique time. Uh, can you hear me this book here, the little one? It's in our Sabbath Seder book, but we decided we wanted to get some with color. And uh, we, we got these, uh, which are, it's the total grace after the meal. As a matter of fact, here, why don't you talk about it, and I'll open up a couple of pages so that people can see You can see can the see pictures the, and everything. Yael loves this, and in fact, it's we're using our Sabbath Seder well, book. Well, as a matter of fact, these are laminated uh, pages. It's, it's a very clear acrylic type page so that you don't have to worry about food stains or things like that, and they're very, very inexpensive from Art Scroll. As a matter of fact, I think we purchased these through Scott Lafka. Right, and so whatever you do, just do your Sabbath meal to the Lord and do it to the best of your ability. Start with what you can do and then add. Don't try to copy us. Do it according to your own. Mishpachah Shalom.